Howdy there, baby doll. Look at you riding your bull. So, token inflation. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a balance sheet expense. Okay? And you're going to ask, what's the income? Well, where the income? Believers are the income. You've got to put your money from your wallet into the pool, the Uniswap pool. When you buy something, if you even buy on Binance or any other exchange, you're putting money into the pool. You take money out of your wallet, you place it there, and then you extract the coin for yourself. I'm going to show you some cute diagrams later. So inflation, it can be good or it can be bad. We just think it's usually bad, bad because we don't trust how most people are going to spend it because nobody spends your money like yourself. Okay, so I've got examples here, right? Hex inflation. It's given to long-term believers. That's the T-share system. When you stake, you get a bit of yield. Congratulations. If you stake super long, you get all of the yield. Now, I'm not saying go lock up your money. I'm just telling you those are the rules of the system. What about the Bitcoin miners? They spend the inflation on their security fueled by the electricity to dump it. They have to keep themselves afloat. They get the inflation reward today, all of the reward, and they must dump. Ethereum spends it on validators, stakers, whatever. Okay? You just need growth to be above inflation, and we're good. So, we're going to go have a look. And you know, during the early days of Bitcoin, you'll notice something happened. It went up only 2464090, like a big, big, big number. We understand that. But look at this, friend, baby dolls. Look at this. I'm going to show you. I know it's a bit hard to see, but look at the inflation. The inflation here was very high. So this is the inflation. Look at this. Okay, we're going down here. And the inflation for, for Bitcoin was enormous, friends. Like I can even get the mouse here. Look at this. At the very start, 2010, 172%. If I can zoom in and we can be friends, let's show you. Here we go. Oh my God, look at this. Absolutely insane. 150%. We're looking at the blue number here. Then it goes down to 30%. So let me quickly just delete this. Look how big it was, man. Like You got to understand, they're huge numbers. So if you don't understand the rules of the system, no matter what it is, you're going to come in, you're going to watch this weird Satoshi dude on a forum. You don't know who he, she, they, them is. It could be a duck named Greg. And you're watching them go, wait a minute. You're here saying that the government is printing money, yet the inflation rate for Bitcoin is 150%? Excuse me? Where are your socks, sir? So, if you don't understand the rules of the system... You would have walked away from Bitcoin and missed out on your 100,000 X. Actually went like 6.5 million X, right? So over time, it went down. The Bitcoin miners were getting the inflation. This is the expense. It drops the price. But we saw from here, the price went up heaps. So obviously, the growth rate vastly exceeded the price. That's all that actually matters. Inflation rate of 2% can be dangerous if you're not growing. Do you want me to show you an example? Have you heard of a little coin called gold, the oldest form of money? That's right. You know, gold, I know this is harsh, right? A lot of gold lovers listen to me. I love you too, friends. But gold has an inflation rate of about 2% per year. How's that looking for you? Oh my God, I hate looking at this chart. Oh, I've got so much PTSD. And I've never even owned gold. And like I've got PTSD, friends. I just feel like this chart hurts. Oh my God, just... It doesn't even matter if gold goes up from here. Like the fact that in 2011, it was the same price. Oh my God. Okay, so gold is worth 10 trillion market cap. So don't worry, okay? But yeah, that's true, man. Gold is inflating at 2% per year. So they're getting about $200 billion of gold out of the ground and they're dumping it. Dump, dump, dump. 
So all those news channels and all those shows, they're actually gold miners. A lot of the gold miners love sponsoring those shows. They're like, oh, we love gold. They love the gold community because they're buying their bags that they're dumping. It's a rough world. Imagine what the crypto industry would look like if the Bitcoin miners were paying a lot of the influencers to shill it. So you can understand why people at the beginning of crypto, they were very skeptical because this system, they'd never seen anything like it before. They thought this thing is a one-way ticket to zero. So you can see, you know, inflation, Bitcoin had, you know, gold can't go up with 2% inflation, right? And Bitcoin was going up with 100% inflation rate. But look at the market cap difference. So I know a lot of people get upset with market cap, but everybody's heard of gold. See, that's bearish, friends. Everyone who could ever have thought of or conceived or wondered about gold has wondered about gold. But Bitcoin was still unknown. And now we're in the crypto industry. It's still unknown. So don't don't think high inflation rates are bad. On average, they're bad because you don't trust how everyone's going to spend the expense, right? Because they're just diluting the treasury. But Bitcoin succeeded with a high inflation rate. You know, Ethereum had a high inflation rate at the start as well. Ethereum had 60 million Ethereum and it grew to 120 million Ethereum. It grew 100% the supply, man. Pretty big, but still pumped to the moon. Ethereum still did a 4,500x. That's right, you heard me. Let's get it right here. From 31 cent ICO to the top, because a lot of people here don't believe my socks are fluffy. How big is that number, friends? You know, whoa. It's a big number, big number. So it's it, the inflation expense on the balance sheet, you really got to think about where it's going and how they're using it. If you just focus on this though, it's not going to give you the answers you want because how can you really know what's going on under the hood? See, with Bitcoin, they're mining. This is, this is going to be interesting, friends. Bitcoin mine, 900, blo 900 Bitcoin every day right now every day 900 bitcoin so you can calculate if you do 900 bitcoin by 30 days in the month there's 27,000 bitcoin mined that's why if the price is $25,000 that's 675 million dollars given to the bitcoin miners today now they dump it now See, they don't even have a chance to shill it. That's the thing. So, 675 million of BTC given to miners every month. Every month. And I'm gonna. I'm sorry, friends. I know this hurts. Please look away if you can't handle it. But I'm gonna have to put a hammer emoji here. That's a lot of money, man. That's a Michael Saylor every two months. So in 12 months, that's six Michael Saylors dumping. It's rough. He inject his injection money, right? It's still a bit, it's a lot of amount of money. So what's going to happen after the Bitcoin halvening? After the Bitcoin halvening, this halves, but you hope the price is higher, right? So if the Bitcoin halvening, the blocks are going to go down per day from 900, they'll go down to 450. But are you hoping that the price is $100,000? Right, I've done it for the monthly. That's 1.35 billion. So here we have the number. That's the inflation expense, friends. So... At 100k Bitcoin, right, to prevent it going from zero, we need 1.35 billion every month. And look, once again, if, if you can't handle this, please look away. There's going to be two hammer emojis here. If you can't handle the truth, you don't deserve to be here because this is the truth. We're peanut brains here. I know, friends, sometimes you, we got a bit heated on this channel. We get a bit a bit energetic. We've got to remind ourselves we are peanut brains and we're going to change the background here, the outside rim to a green, okay? That's a lot of money being dumped just to keep it at $100,000 in the future. Think about all that pressure. Now, it's going to get there because they keep printing more money, but there's alternatives. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to hold the oldest asset you don't have to you can trim off parts of your portfolio you can play this in a different way so will bitcoin's growth beat the inflation yeah the
the big, the inflation's going down, everything's going to be okay in that camp. Well, depends what you mean okay, you know. If you're putting in 10K, 30K, you hope to retire, we're going to have to have a long talk, okay. Yeah, if your clip is 700K, you want a 5X, you're up 3.5 mil, pay some tax, okay, sweet. But is your clip 700K, friends? The average person isn't. Why? I've seen your DMs. You sending me some crazy body parts and pictures. All right, I don't think you guys got 700K to clip in. So where is the inflation getting spent? Always think about that. In Hex, right? In Hex, let's get the cute Hex logo out. The inflation is spent by people who were locked up. So, you know, the game theory is, hey, you're going to talk about this for a long time. That It spreads, the mind virus spreads. So you've got to work for the inflation. You know, Bitcoin, you do work for it. It's called proof of work, but your work is, I do the, I do the work now in the electricity form and I dump it now. So you don't, it's a different form of working, okay? Different form. Hex's form of working is waiting. That's why they say proof of weight, okay? Now, Please, I'm just going to tell you right now, if Hex goes to zero, all of these game theory shenanigans everyone talks about, it's all out the door. I'm not even joking. Because humans, we, when we see a price go up, we attach meaning to everything. We say, oh my God, of course it goes up because X, Y, Z, because of game theory A, B, C. That's what happens, all right? So we can get very fooled about what's going on. When sometimes maybe just the price goes up because it just wants to, because just someone was bored and started buying it, Okay. So you've got to be very careful. I always remain unbiased. I will remain your friend. Yes, you can call me at the night. I will come pick you up. Maybe you drank a little bit too much. You don't want your girlfriend to see how drunk you are. You can stay the place at mine and I'll just make an excuse for you in the morning. But please, you have to understand where the inflation is going. Everything has inflation. Everything pays itself. You're trying to pay people now in future growth. People who accept the inflation now for themselves, they are punting that the growth is going to be bigger in the future. That's the truth with everything. Okay, even in stonks. But the companies, they just dilute the stonks and they just play, they just smash them down and they try to pay off, you know, the salaries and companies and the company expenses that they can. So this is how the game works. We're dealing with our own ecosystem here. Okay. Different things are going to have different inflation, friends, you know. So why I even like Chainlink, right? Chainlink has token inflation, but it's accessed by the team. So the team draws out the coins and they dumped on us to raise money. So yeah, it's hard, but it is what it is, man. If you want to do real world assets and you want to do this bug eating society with the World Economic Forum, you got to go through this game. And that's it. It's just a different set of stories that it's got to play out through, okay? But the inflation of Chainlink, it's going to believers because... You got to be staked. Your collaterals got to be locked up. You got to be paying in link tokens. You got to stake link to match everything, right? But it's in the future now. It's even more future than Hex. Hex is like today. It's just about the community growing. Okay, so that's why I own both. I like them. I don't know who's gonna like win more, win harder, or have less volatility. I don't know, but I like both of them. If you like both of them, hop on in. Ethereum, same story, friends. Ethereum validators. The staking, the yield, where's it going? It's going to people within the system. But you get them now. You get the yield today. You can stake a billion dollars worth of ETH. You can, ETH, you can just start dumping it every month. You can. So the inflation, it's important. But at the end of the day, the M2 money rate is 5% per year on average. So we don't really need to matter, uh, matter and worry too much right, in this game, but it's interesting to see how they're spent. And, you know, inflation is a supply side thing, friends. What's actually going to make your coin go do this, right? You need marketing messaging. You need people to buy. You need people to sell the story, all right? Don't worry about the inflation, tokenomics and stuff, right? You can make the best tokenomics in the world. If no one wants to buy your coin, if no one wants to actually place money that they have, from their wallet, which is here, if no one actually wants to bring their money over and then put USD into a pool of money and retrieve a coin, 
which I'm just going to use a banana emoji. Actually, is there a coin here? There's a coin purse, right? Because that's actually what happens. When you, when you put money somewhere, you are placing your fiat into a pool. That's when you buy on an exchange, Uniswap, Binance, wherever it is, anything you do, and you receive something, okay? But if you want to buy something that's obviously more scarce in the future than it is today. So my final message, friends, you understand what time it is. There's a lot of coins out there. Everyone's give, got different ideas how to spend the inflation. I just want you to know, Bitcoin is growing, but there's going to be some heavy dump pressure, okay? You don't have to succumb to this. There are other fathers of growing networks, okay? But I understand a lot of people don't feel comfortable rotating out. You don't have to rotate everything out. There is absolutely nothing wrong, friends. Let me show you some risk management, okay? There's nothing wrong if you have a portfolio and you leave like 80% BTC and then you say, hey, this 20% BTC, rotate to other stuff. You can do that, right? You can do that. There's nothing stopping you. And you can play. And you, you know what you say to yourself? You go, hey, if these other altcoins, right, whatever crypto project it is, you say, if they are the next second coming of Christ himself and they pump to the heavens, well, they're going to overtake your BTC anyway. It's a win-win for you. We are so blessed that we're in the industry this early that you can actually make some mistakes and still come back. And don't take that for granted. Until next time, friends.